In this video, I'm going to take you through the top 10 ranked UK medical schools for 2023. Here, we're going to talk individually about what makes each of them great. Although the, the things that I might talk about might apply to all universities, I'll still explain them for a particular one just so that you can understand the significance of that. Also, although these are the top 10, these universities might not appeal to you. So maybe you want to decide for you what is your best individual university. So I would recommend that you check out this video here where I go through exactly how you should think about universities based on your individual preferences. So in at number 10 is Queen's University Belfast. So that's in Northern Ireland for those of you who aren't familiar and it's a relatively new university. Because of that it's quite modern in the way that it teaches and it has access to two teaching hospitals which is quite significant for a university. Students actually comment on not only the early clinical exposure so it means that they're seeing patients from first year but also the high quality teaching that they get. When universities are quite new and modern and they often are quite innovative in the way that they teach clinically and Queen's Belfast is no exception to that. Queen's University Belfast also offer full body dissection. So the things that we need to appreciate are the difference between prosection and dissection. So dissection is when you get a cadaver assigned to you and usually a group of about 10 of you and you dissect the body. So you basically perform operations to identify anatomical parts. Whereas prosection is when those uh, those cadavers or those samples have been dissected for you already and you're just there to essentially look at them, pick them up, understand them anatomically, but you don't actually do the dissecting yourself, which is a big significant difference for a lot of people. I went to a university with dissection and felt that it was much better doing it that way and it helped me understand it much more when I was doing the dissecting myself. Queens do what is called case-based learning. So that means that Instead of learning subjects individually, they bring them to life by representing them with a clinical case. So they might present a patient who comes presenting with certain symptoms and they've had certain investigations and they have certain social problems and they will kind of talk about all of the relevant subjects and you'll learn the anatomy, the physiology, all of the um, diagnoses and the treatments for that and maybe any social aspects based around this case that has brought all of these things to life. Some of the standard things that they do that I'll take you through are for one, an assistantship program. So this is where just before you're about to start your job, ideally in the job that you're going to do, you will go onto the ward and actually practice what it's like to be an FY1 doctor before actually starting. So as part of university, they are kind of preparing you and making sure that you're ready for your first day as a doctor. The other thing that they offer is something called an intercalated degree, halfway through the degree. So usually after your third year, you then go and do an extra degree. So whether that's a BSc or an MSc of a subject of your choosing. So essentially you manage to earn an extra degree in just one year and you're piggybacking off the back of the scientific knowledge that you've gained in your first two to three years of medical school. Another very standard thing that they do is in final year you do an elective placement. So elective means that you choose and you pick wherever you want to go in the world, a subject that you're interested in and you go and do normally about five weeks, maybe some more. So this is something where you typically go abroad. For example, I went to South America and did infectious diseases in Buenos Aires and then traveled around all of South America. But people tend to do it with more of a fun thing that you're obviously learning and experiencing another healthcare system, but also combine it with some travels to just end the degree in a very nice way, usually traveling with the group of friends that you've made throughout medical school. Rank number nine was the University of St. Andrews, which is up in Scotland. Now, this university is about six centuries old, so one of the most ancient ones, but equally very innovative. They do a lot of small group teaching, which is similar to what the Oxbridge type universities do, and are really good for basically making sure that you, your knowledge is at the level it needs to be. When you're in small groups like that, you can get a lot of individual focus from some of the tutors. And another thing that students like most about St Andrews is the fact that they also do cadaveric dissection but they've actually got really good ratios of cadaver to student. I think it's in the region of about six to one so that's pretty good. Also they have early clinical exposure as well something that people very much enjoy being in hospital kind of getting a feel for what it's like to be a doctor even though obviously you're just a student observing. It's still good to see the end goal early on in your medical degree. If you're already getting excited about becoming a medical student and you're applying to medical school, you might wanna check out the channel or maybe this video here because I give you a full breakdown of everything that you need to nail to make sure that you get into medicine. And then that video
video will serve as a directory for all of the resources that I give for free on this YouTube channel, or actually if you'd want some one-on-one -on -one help, we've had really good success with getting students on our one-on-one -on -one coaching program for FutureDoc for the last 13 years now, with a ridiculous success rate at getting students in. So maybe if you wanna check that out, it's worth applying to our program. Number eight is another Scottish university, the University of Dundee. So here, also the things that people tend to like about it is the cadaveric dissection. So as you can see, there's a bit of a theme here with those that offer dissection tend to be things that students really enjoy. Also at Dundee, you can do an intercalated degree after your third year before you move on to your clinical training. So that suggests that it is a bit more separated. It's clinics after the third year. Now, there's a lot of ways that they teach at Dundee and actually they have quite a wide range of methods that they used to teach. Anything from traditional lectures, problem-based lectures where you'll explore scientific problems, case-based lectures where you're looking to cases related to the topic that you're learning about, team-based lectures where you'll work in teams throughout the class, and as we said, dissection, simulation-based learning, which is absolutely fantastic. Normally the way that it works is that you get a mannequin, which is worth about a quarter of a million pounds, and it does everything, simulates everything from increased pulse rate, and you can feel the pulse on it, to it blinks, and its, uh, its pupils constrict when you shine a light on it. So it is fantastic for learning, especially emergency cases, and getting you comfortable with dealing those, ca those cases under pressure without having to go in at the deep end and do it for the first time in a real scenario. Other things that are well liked at Dundee are the clinical placements and also the ward-based placements. And they also have something called a longitudinal clerkship where you basically follow a patient on their journey and kind of get into their shoes and see what it's like to be a patient going through the healthcare system. In at number seven is the University of Leicester. So they're quite well known for research, having everything from BAME research to cardiovascular, cancer research, and many others. Leicester specifically say that they are not a problem-based learning course, but they are a patient-centered curriculum, which comprises of group teaching, lectures, clinical teaching, just to give you a well-rounded picture of medical diseases. So also here, students like that it's very hands-on and they're seeing patients right from the beginning, and also the fact that they have full body dissection. So in at number six of this year's top ranked medical schools in the UK, we have Imperial College London. Now Imperial College as a general university is pretty much always ranked in the top five UK universities. So really it prides itself on its research and in fairness to it, it is always at the forefront of taking uh, what is re new research and applying it clinically. And they are really well known for many breakthroughs in, in research and advances in the medical field. Imperial pride themselves on offering a research-led student experience. But not only that, this is the first one where you're in a really big city. So Imperial obviously being in London um, is the biggest city in the UK. And that is something to factor in because personally I've lived in London for over seven years now. I absolutely love it here. It's very different being a student uh, compared to if you're in a smaller university. So that is something to bear in mind because when you live in a very big city, your student identity is maybe a bit diluted by the fact that you're another person in the big city. So something to bear in mind as to whether you your identity is someone who would like to associate with the glitz and glam of a big city, or you're happier with a smaller city, smaller town, or maybe even a campus-based university. We've actually just started a series of individual university profiles, so we'll be bringing each university out every week. So to make sure that you don't miss out, I recommend that you subscribe to the channel and uh, turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss anything, because not only are we going to be putting out those university profiles, every week I'm going to give you a video that is what you need to be doing at that stage of the med school application. So if you're serious about applying to medical school, keep just on top of what we're doing. And if you want, you can check out the link to my newsletter in the description below that will just keep you on the cutting edge of what's happening and how to stay on top so that you deliver a really competitive application. So over halfway, number five was the University of Bristol. Now the University of Bristol pride themselves on their innovative curriculum, which centers around patient contact, integration of scientific and clinical learning, and the development of skills needed to become a good doctor. So the way that they do this is a combination of a few things. That's early clinical exposure, so seeing patients early on, uh, lectures, case-based learning, and practical work. They do cadaveric prosections, again, rather than dissection. Students and the website say that they have a substantial student choice program. So this is another thing that we'll touch on that's 
pretty common for most medical schools is that you have student selected components. Now these are modules where you decide you get an option and maybe if you're into oncology and you want to study cancer you can do that. If you want to go deeper into anatomy you can do that and literally there are so many choices whatever take, piques your interest and you'd like the look of you can just go down that avenue and for that module that's what you can select. They also like most universities have a final year elective but what's quite cool about Bristol is that in the final year they basically focus on getting you ready for foundation training which means that you kind of just get your finals out of the way quite early and then the final year you don't have to worry so much about exams you can just focus purely on uh, gaining the skills and the knowledge and everything necessary to make you a good doctor so you can hit the ground running when you start real work as a doctor in your foundation training. In at number four we have the University of Edinburgh which prides itself on having the fourth highest research power in the UK which basically means the quality and the breadth of research that they do they are the fourth best in the UK at. Not only that they are classed as Scotland's top institution so a very reputable fantastic medical school also a great city to live in because there's just so much going on if you've ever visited Edinburgh it is a fantastic city to be in. So the way they teach at Edinburgh is a combination of lectures, tutorials, lab and project work, clinical placements, computer assisted learning and probably the most exciting thing is the simulated ward that they have. So I was talking about Sim Man earlier and how you practice that. They have an entire ward uh, that is just a simulation for you to again go even deeper in that immersive practice of what it's like to be a doctor, what it's like to be on a ward where it's pressured and just understand how to deal with cases as they come and get that practice in before having to face the real thing. In at number three, we have the University of Glasgow. Quite impressive to note that of top 10 universities, four of them are Scottish. There are only five Scottish medical schools and there are over 44 medical schools in the UK. And so now four of those five are in the top 10 for 2023. So a fantastic achievement for Scottish universities. Not only that, Glasgow is a fantastic city and it's really fun, uh, really manageable size and just a great vibe there. Glasgow is a Russell Group University. The teaching styles comprise small group teaching, problem-based learning, lectures, vocational and clinical studies, labs and e-learning and they also have what they call a spiral curriculum. So what happens with that is that you learn something, gain some skills and you kind of learn stuff around it and then you revisit it several times throughout the curriculum. Ideally each time that you're passing it you've got more knowledge and you can kind of connect the dots a bit more with other things that you learning and each time that you revisit it you strengthen that knowledge. For those who are interested in becoming a GP they have something called the Community Orientated Medical Experience Track or Comet and that is basically a program that is designed to make some badass next generation GPs the best that they can possibly be. And again Glasgow is big on student selected components so that you can choose the things that you're interested in and go down the path and just follow your nose to what excites you in medicine. So probably no surprise but in at number two is the University of Oxford. Now now, what makes Oxford University particularly special is it's famous for the teaching, research and learning opportunities. Undergraduate students have personalised regular tutorial teaching with subject experts and a part of college communities which provide a safe and supportive learning environment for study. The tutorial system makes a really big difference to the quality of learning. You get a lot of either one-on-one -on -one attention or like three to four people in a group attention and sitting with an expert makes such a big difference to how well you're not what level your knowledge is at and how well they can help you if you're not quite where you need to be or you've got some gaps that need filling and that is why the quality of teaching is really well rated at Oxford University. So Oxford is pretty big on doing things the traditional way which is that you have two years of basic foundation science uh, learning before you go on to your clinical years later on where you're in hospital so they really are very well separated. One of the things that they're very big on is basing all of the teaching on basic science research that underpins everything. So not just looking at the science, but looking at the research that has kind of led them to know what they know. And research is a big part of teaching at Oxford as well. All medical students at Oxford undertake an experimental research project as part of their bachelors in medical sciences. So that means that everybody comes out of it with really valuable first-hand experience in scientific research. So in at number one, there will be no surprises to hear that it's Cambridge University. Cambridge is, I think, the fourth oldest university
university in the world. It was founded in 1209 or something like that, and obviously comes with a lot of tradition. The first three years of preclinical study involved lectures, practical classes, including dissections and supervisions. The emphasis on the clinical years during years four, five, and six is on learning in the clinical setting. Students' progress is reviewed weekly and termly by college supervisors. So formal assessment, which determines their ability to proceed on the course, includes written and practical examinations, coursework submission, and clinical assessments. So they're really having very in-depth, regular, one-on-one, -on -one, or maybe like I say, three or four-on-one sessions with tutors, just to be constantly checking that the knowledge is where it needs to be. So the things that Cambridge will tell you that set them apart are, firstly, the competition, just because of the standard of applicant that's going there, the intensity, um, they actually have shorter terms, but it means that the term times are way more intense, often with double the workload. Then the teaching style and the scientific approach, because Cambridge offers very small class sizes, as we said, typically contains three to four students or sometimes one-on-one. -on -one. And the approach to medicine taken by Cambridge is fairly unique, focusing more heavily on the scientific and theoretical aspects of medicine, aiming to teach students the underlying principles behind the subjects they are learning. For the first three years of the six-year degree, there is no contact with patients, instead of using the time for detailed scientific studies. So again, two universities that are very traditional, have a lot of one-on-one -on -one teaching, they really separate out the pre-clinical and the clinical years, and they're very research-based in their approach. So if you want to know more about the individual universities and kind of speaking to students as what it's like really to be there and live it, all of my future doc tutors have each individually done a profile on their university and what's unique to that. So if you want to check out that playlist, if it's not on here now, it'll appear here very soon as we start to roll that out. By all means, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to make sure that you don't miss that. Otherwise, if you want some one-on-one -on -one help with your application, I recommend you check out this video here and see why we've had such great success with getting students into their first choice medical school at the first attempt. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.